Hey everybody, my name is Sid and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about how I got a 50-50 on the SAT and how you can too. And then I'll also talk about why I think it really doesn't matter. I got a 780 on the reading writing section and a 770 on the math section. And I'll walk you through how I got to those scores on both of these and the resources I used to prepare. If you end up enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe, it'll help a lot. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Overall study plan for the SAT really wasn't crazy. I think I put in about a month of real work where I work for, where I study for like two hours a day. I didn't really put a lot of effort into the math portion. I didn't really learn anything new. I really spent all of my time working on the English and grammar portion because I just wasn't really good at it. And that's something you should note that if you're already pretty good at math or already really good at the reading writing section, just don't worry about it and focus on what you're weak at. So it's best to take a practice test before you really watch this video or do any SAT prep because then you can identify your weaknesses. But I do think that you can get a lot done by just studying for a month, an hour a day, and getting in some full length practice tests in between. This is the rest of this really short video. The reading slash writing section of the SAT or the English section is one that many people struggle with, including myself. This was what I had the most trouble with when I was beginning my SAT prep and taking like the initial practice test. Um, and I found that the only thing that really helped with this is to just do a bunch of practice problems. I treated it like I would treat if I, uh, math, if I was studying for some sort of a math test, just doing a bunch of practice problems. Now this more so applied to the grammar section, but there are really concrete rules that you can follow. And something that really helped me with the grammar section was using Erica L. Meltzer's book, The Ultimate Guide to SAT Grammar, I, I think it's called. And I ended up only getting one question wrong in the grammar section just by going through that book doing a bunch of the exercises within that book, learning the grammar rules, and then also doing a bunch of the exercises on Khan Academy and coupling that with Khan Academy's full length practice tests. Now the writing section, the grammar section, which I just talked about, contains four passages, each 11 questions, so 44 total questions. And then the reading section is also four passages, but each, uh, each passage has 13 questions, so 52 total questions, 13 as far as 52. And the reading question, the reading session, I found to be a lot easier because you don't have to continuously go back to the passage um, to check um, what type of grammar you need to use. The reading section, my main strategy was to just read through every passage first, do a quick read initially, then look at the questions. And if I feel the need to go back and verify my answer in the questions, or if it's asking what sentence supports this idea from the text most, then I would go back to the passage again and read it a few more times. But otherwise, I would just read it once really quickly and then zoom through the questions. And then I ended up finishing the reading section actually a lot quicker than I anticipated I would. And I had quite a bit of time left over and I ended up actually getting every question on the reading section right. And I did this just by reading through the questions. Now there's a lot of different ways to approach this. If you wanted to, you could just go look at the questions first and then refer back to the passage and see, okay, this is what's really helpful to, from the passage for this particular question. But I find that to be really inefficient compared to just going through the passage, identifying the main idea. And then when you're going through the questions, you'll be able to remember what happened in the passage and connect what you learned. And it'll be a really easy going to solve the problem. Again, to practice with the reading session, I used Erica L. Meltzer's The Ultimate Guide to SAT Reading, as well as using Khan Academy's reading practice questions and their full length practice test. For the math section, I personally didn't study any new concepts because I already kind of learned them all in school. I think I took the SAT in my 10th grade fall, right? And I already learned a lot of these concepts in school. In school, they don't teach you a lot of, they don't ask you questions about a lot of advanced things on the normal SAT. They just ask you simple things that you've already learned in tricky ways and the time pressure against you. So again, the best way to practice for the math section is to just do a bunch of practice problems, which I got done through doing a bunch of full length practice tests because I was already feeling pretty confident. I got zero to three questions wrong on each practice test. And I was like, that'll probably be good enough. I ended up getting two questions wrong on the actual SAT and a 770 on the math section. In the math section, I got two questions wrong and I found that to be really, really good, right? Uh, sure, I made a bunch of silly mistakes in the math section and I could have done better, but it's fine. The 770 is very, very good. So honestly, just solve a bunch of problems and you'll be doing really well. For this, I didn't use any like external book. I kind of just used Khan Academy's math practice section for the SAT and their full length practice test, like I mentioned. It's such a great resource. They have so many problems. They have like eight practice tests. There's so much free stuff available on Khan Academy that you really have everything you need to prepare for the SAT. You know, if you're a little bit weaker at math, you will have to practice a lot because that really is the only way to get good at math. And even if you are already good, then I suggest doing quite a few practice problems because you know, you, you can never be too certain that you know what you're doing. Let me talk about why I don't think SAT scores matter all that much. Um, I think as long as you're within like the 50th uh, percentile for a school that you're applying to, 
then you'll be fine. You're not going to get rejected because you had a 1510 instead of a 1540 or a 1550 instead of a 1600 or a 1440 instead of a 1500. You're not going to get rejected because your score was a little bit lower than the tre- threshold. You'll be fine as long as you're somewhere within that range, right? And even then, if you feel like your SAT score isn't great when you take it and you know you can't retake it for some reason, then you can apply test optional to basically all universities, at least for this applica- application cycle. And I think a few more, they're going test optional, which means you don't actually have to submit your SAT test score or your ACT test score. You can just submit without your test scores. And they say that it won't actually have a negative effect on your application. So sure, submitting a higher test score will benefit you and for that reason, I do think that you should obviously try really hard to get a good high score on these tests. But if you don't, it isn't the end of the world and there's a lot of other ways to make up for it in your application. Now, I do say it doesn't matter all that much. Um, all that much is the key phrase there. I do think it is very important to do well. Um, and you should study hard and give it your best shot because, you know, you don't really have anything to lose by doing really well, but you have a lot to gain. If you have any questions about what I talked about in this video, leave them in the comments down below or join my Discord server, link in the description, and talk to me or my community about them. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Good luck on your SATs.